this is an intro that you do not want to miss. If shit has been starting to feel a little eerie, a little ominous, a little dark, <laughs> like there's something lingering right underneath the surface, or if you're starting to feel a sense of heaviness, some insecurity, some lack coming up lately, well, my friend, welcome to the Scorpio Lunar Eclipse. Y'all, I am about to read this mother effing chart to filth. Like, whoo, there's so much coming through that you do not want to miss okay like we are about to get into some shit for real and it is going to be some shit that all of you need to hear i guarantee it if not you can leave your negative reviews and bitch about it down in the comments below because i'm sure someone will but for the most part this is going to be shit that a lot of you need to hear especially especially after seeing a lot of the comments on the may horoscopes a lot of people are feeling this and feeling very intense fear-based, lack-based energies, and so this is for you, boo. All right, let's rewind for a second. If you're new here, my name is Tawny Michelle. I do a lot of astrology and spiritual shit, so if that is your vibe, make sure to subscribe before you leave. Make sure to share this video with your friends, family, mom, aunt, uncle, cousin, neighbor, okay? Like that chick that you hate because maybe like, I don't know, she might get something from it, you know? Share this with everybody because it really helps me out. If you get anything from this video, it would be super, super kind of you if you could comment down below and let me know what you got from it. I would really appreciate that. That it helps the video, it helps more people see the video. I really, really appreciate those of you that do. So now that we got all that shit out of the way, let's go ahead and get into this Scorpio lunar eclipse because this is such a big deal. And yeah, so because I am coming out with like back-to-back -back videos with the May horoscopes, which if you haven't seen, you need to go watch that. Um, but I am not going to edit this video too much because I am doing this kind of right at the last minute and I want to be able to get this out to you. I think it's more important that you see it and absorb this um, as soon as possible uh, before the eclipse. So I'm not going to edit this video too much, so just keep that in mind. But yeah, let's get into it. Okay, so I'm actually going to try to show you my chart that I am looking at for once so we can really break this the fuck down and I can read this to mother effing filth because there's a lot going on that I want to talk about and I just want to show you. I want to really be able to show you as I'm going through it and yeah, so let's freaking do this. So we have a Scorpio lunar eclipse, which as you can see is right here. We have the moon in Scorpio at 14 degrees. So the lunar eclipse, a lunar eclipse, is basically a full moon that is near the nodes. So the nodes are karmic representations, karmic and faded representations, mathematical points in the sky that show us where we have eclipses based on the moon's orbit. That is basically what a lunar eclipse is. Now, what does a lunar eclipse mean? What does it bring, right? Well, it brings something similar to full moons, but way more amplified. The energy is turned all the way up on the dial. Things are felt way more intensely, and that is basically a full moon. It brings things to light. It brings things out of the shadows. It lights up the night sky. So things are revealed for us to release and let go of. There are peak moments that can really show us things that have been kind of in the shadows up until that point. And so it is a time of heightened emotions, heightened energy, but because this is an eclipse, because this is happening somewhat near the nodes, it also, that, that also comes into it. So there's like a faded karmic twist with this energy as well. So there's a lot of faded karmic things that are happening right now. Uh, there's just a lot of really heightened, heightened energy that's going on and things can feel a little bit more out of our control or a little bit more risky or unpredictable than usual, right? Things can feel kind of ominous. Things can feel kind of eerie, but there's just a lot of energy happening right now. And if something's happening naturally, if something's coming up, if the, these eclipses, if this energy is bringing up something in you naturally, then cool beans. <laughs> I haven't said that in so fucking long. Um, go for it, right? Do whatever you want. You're, you're a big, big grown up, right? So anyway, so a lunar eclipse in Scorpio. This is going to be on top of it, ending a somewhat ending a massive cycle that we've been having since January of 2022 last year. So something has started in our lives around that time and the peak moments of it really came around May 2022 and 
October into November 2022 as well, right? Now this is kind of ending those cycles in really big ways and bringing a lot of the things that we've been learning around those times and since January 2022 to the surface for us to really face, to really deal with like whatever shit is left that we need to face, this is what it is bringing up, right? Now, let's move on. What is Scorpio, the sign of Scorpio, where this lunar eclipse is happening? Scorpio is a sign that really brings out depth. It is a water sign, but it is a thick sign. So it's like really concentrated water, water that has a lot of depth, that is very concentrated, that is very deep, and it is ruled by Mars in traditional astrology, which is what I practice, thank you. And so Scorpio has a tendency as a sign to bring our deepest fears, insecurities, our deepest feelings, and also our attachments to the surface, right? It has this ability to also kind of hold on to things for dear life out of lack, insecurity, fear, attachment, scarcity, things like this, right? So we're going to see a lot of these things coming up. Where in our lives do we have certain fears? Where in our lives do we have certain insecurities? Where in our lives are we operating on lack or scarcity? right? Not enough, right? It, where is it like, you know, where are we operating on this like void that we're trying to fill instead of the Taurus energy? Now, this Taurus energy is where the North Node, it's like the little uh, horseshoe, which is where the North Node is, right? So this is like the North Star, basically, right? And in, in metaphorically speaking, it's like, this is where we are being directed by the universe to learn more about because it's unknown or because of whatever reason, right? Like there are certain lessons here that we need to learn as a collective, as, you know, as a society, as a world, as humans right now, right? So the North Node in Taurus is all about security, abundance, a lot of the opposite things of Scorpio, right? It's like, hey, where can I find that sense of stability, abundance, that sense of just everything's good, I can breathe. I don't need to possess anything or try to attach to something out of fear. I can enjoy the beauty around me and I can find that beauty and pleasure within myself because I am a part of everything around me. I am abundance, I am bliss, I am creativity, I am beauty, I am you know, security, I am stability, I am consistency, right? Like this is Taurus. And this is the energy that we've been put, been being pushed into. We've been being pushed into seeing how we can simplify our lives and do things in a way that is more uh, fulfilling and enjoyable and not caught up in the chaos of Scorpio, right? Scorpio is the opposite of Taurus. It's chaotic, it's complex, it's complicated, right? It's deep, it's like personal, it wants to hold on to shit that's not fucking good for it, right? And so where are we holding on to stuff that is not good for us, right? Where are we holding on to lack, to fear, to insecurity? Where are we clinging for dear life to something because our emotion, our emotional worlds feel like we're not going to be safe or secure without it. Where have we been going about obtaining security or stability in our lives out of scarcity and out of lack, right? Where have we convinced ourselves that we need certain things that we don't? Where have we convinced ourselves that we need this chaos? that we need this complexity, that we need this complicated fucking shit in our lives, right? <laughs> like where have we convinced ourselves that we need all this chaos, all this drama, all this stuff, right? Where really we don't. Really what our souls are craving as a collective at this time is more simplicity, more value, more quality in our lives. But we think, because the South Node brings up, you know, what we're attached to, our karma, etc. We think that we are not worth that, or we are not deserving of that in some way, or that we lack the ability to. That we are just too attached to our old chaos, our old ways, our old pain, our old defense mechanisms, our old insecurities, our old ways of doing things, and we fall back into the old deep, dark patterns that end up being self-destructive 
to us and our lives and the people in our lives, right? And so wherever we are clinging out of need, out of lack, out of scarcity, right? Out of insecurity, out of fear, out of attachment, is what is going to get brought up. And that can be scary, right? That can be scary. Because the way that I described this last year for the Scorpio Lunar Eclipse, I'm gonna use a similar analogy, but I'm gonna add to it, amplify it a little bit. The way that I described this last year was that at some point in your life, you got the shit end of the stick. You experienced pain, loss, insecurity, deep wounds, right? And you didn't know how to deal with this, right? It was like traumatizing. It was torture. It was, you know, really freaking dark. You didn't know how to deal with this. You didn't know how to deal with these intense emotions that it brought up within you. And so what happened was instead of dealing with them or feeling them or whatever, because you didn't know how, you put a lid on them. You put them in a big garbage bag, right? You put them in a garbage bag and you decided to carry them with you because you had to keep going through life. Life was still happening with or without you. And so you had to keep it moving, but you still have carried all of that pain, all of that trauma, all of that fear, all of that attachment, all of those wounds, all of that old suffering with you in this garbage bag on your back for however many years. Let me know if this is landing with you right now in the comments. Just let me know. Let me know if you're, if you're here, if you're focusing, if, you, if this is all just like hitting you, right? You've been carrying this for however long, for however many years. You've even built defense mechanisms around it to defend it because guess what? Because you carried it for so long, you became attached to this. You started becoming attached to this pain. You started identifying with your pain. You started identifying with these struggles. You started identifying with all of this suffering within you. And you started convincing yourself that it was just who you were, that you just don't deserve abundance and happiness and all of the things, that you just don't deserve fulfillment, that you just don't deserve enjoyment, that you just don't deserve pleasure and nice things and things that are of quality, that you just don't deserve that. You have convinced yourself that this is just who you are, how you are, and that you're going to carry this pain, this trash bag of shit, of old feelings, traumas, whatever it is, right, of garbage on your back with you because you've had to for so freaking long. And so when you see other people that are abundant or that are healed or enjoying their lives, you might even get envious or jealous or pissed off. It might feel like a very threat to your existence because you've had to live in pain, because you've had to live with all of this shit for so long that you think it's just who you are. You think you were just cursed or you think that this is just always how you're going to be and there's nothing else that can be done about it in some way, shape or form because you're attached to this garbage bag and you don't realize that it's not you, that it's not just how you are, that this garbage bag is not the real you. And this North Node in Taurus and this Lunar Eclipse in Scorpio is coming to break all of that down. The bag is breaking, okay? It is breaking. And this Lunar Eclipse is saying, you're gonna let that go finally because it's not who you are. It is not who you are. All of that pain, suffering, insecurity, like all of it, it's not who you are. And it doesn't have to be who you are anymore. But can you let it go? It's scary because we don't know who we are on the other side of it. We don't know who we are or who we will become without it. But it can't really be too much worse than what we've already experienced because we've already experienced our deepest fears. We've already experienced what it's like to face these things. Over the last year and a half that the nodes have been traveling through Taurus and Scorpio, it's brought up our greatest fears. It has brought up certain fears and dark shit that we've had to work through, move through, certain difficulties that we've had to face in our lives, certain old versions of us, old insecurities, Old, uh, old things that were habits or that we were attached to, that we thought we needed, that we thought we liked, but that actually turned out to be really toxic and self-destructive. 
and coming from an insecure place within us, coming from a place of lack within us, where we think that we are lacking something or we don't deserve better. And so this lunar eclipse is saying like, hey, yeah, you've been through, you've been through difficult things. Letting this bag go of shit does not mean that that didn't happen or that your pain is not valid, okay? I want you to listen to that. Letting it go does not mean it was not valid because oftentimes that is why we hold on to it. That is why we've identified it. We, we identified with it. We've lived for it for so long that we think, you know, if I were to let it go at this point, does it mean that it wasn't important in the first place? but making it so important that it's literally a part of just who you are and you think that it's just always going to be like this and you are attached to it. And that is what's keeping you stuck if you are feeling stuck in your life somewhere. That is what's keeping you at the current level that you are at right now. So it is time to let that shit go quite literally. Because if you want to get to that life of feeling worthy within, feeling abundant, feeling actually secure, feeling fulfilled, that brighter, more <laughs> enjoyable life, you have to let that shit go. You have to face letting that go. You have to face all of these old fears, pains, traumas, whatever. You have to let this lunar eclipse show you and reveal to you what it is. Whatever is coming up right now is meant to come up right now and it is coming up because you can freaking handle it. You're ready. So if you're going through a problem where you're feeling very insecure lately, if you've been going through something where you're feeling a lot of scarcity, if you're going through something where you're feeling a lot of lack in your life, you need to get to the core of it, right? You need to get to the core of it. And examine these old versions of you, these old beliefs, these old feelings, these old attachments. Like, what are you getting out of being attached to all of this stuff, all of this pain, all of this suffering? You're getting something out of it. It means that you don't have to change, that you don't have to change. Because even in the lack, even in the scarcity, even in the insecurity, at least you know, at least you know what's up. You're more comfortable in that because you know. But releasing that puts you into the unknown. But as soon as you release that, you find out who you really are, who the real you is beyond all of these old defense mechanisms and triggers and tactics and manipulation and, you know, scarcity mindset and like lack and, and all of that beyond all the insecurities and all the, all the shit, right? That is when you find out who you really are without all of that. And that is when you really begin to heal. And so this is like a faded and karmic moment all at once that is like, can you let this go? Can you feel whatever comes up? Because by feeling it, you heal it. By feeling it, you release it. What have you been running from and not wanting to feel because it feels too deep, too intense, too painful, Mars, the ruler of this eclipse, is in Cancer. And Mars is in a square with Chiron as well and Aries. And so this is really bringing up our wounds. This is really bringing up where we've been hurt, where we have felt insignificant, not good enough by other people, by actions that we, we took when we were just being ourselves, that other people laughed at, maybe we were bullied. I've been seeing a lot of people come out and talk about bullying lately, myself included. After I did it, I started seeing all kinds of people that were doing it. Like, it, it's just, I see it everywhere lately. It's like, where were we bullied for our emotions or for feeling a certain way? And so we feel like we have to hold it all in, but this lunar eclipse is a pressure cooker. It is pulling it out of us. It is pushing it out of us. It cannot stay in anymore. This lunar eclipse is a breakthrough and it is a chance to finally, finally shift and get out of this void of desperation and needing to suck things in. Even if your life has been really great lately, right? But 
you know, maybe this lunar eclipse is bringing up some insecurities or old versions of you or old shit that, you know, you're still kind of working through, right? It's not going to be this intense for everybody, you know? It's not going to be like, oh my gosh, you know, like, um, so, but we do have the sun building into a conjunction with Uranus right around the time of this lunar eclipse. And then the moon is going to then oppose Uranus right after this eclipse. So this shows me there's a lot of breaking free liberation with this lunar eclipse. This is a lunar eclipse that can literally, quite literally help us liberate ourselves and free ourselves into a more abundant place if we allow it, if we can see the shadow of what we haven't wanted to face, the icky, dirty, nasty, shameful, guilty stuff under the surface that's been bubbling up. It's like, hey, you can't keep running from this. You can't keep shoving this down out of the spotlight so you don't have to deal with it because then you carry it around with you. And that's what you've done for all these years. Where are you making things complicated? Where are you addicted to the complexity or the intense up and down roller coaster, right? Where are you actually attached to that? You are on some level. If you're over it, then you have to like examine this, right? So this, this lunar eclipse is really about dealing with our old emotions, but it's also about freedom from old dark shit that we no longer want to have power over us because the longer that we don't face it, the more we give it power. The longer that we, the, the, the more that we don't wanna look at it, the more that we wanna keep shoving it under the rug, the more power that we give it because we're saying, oh, it's scary, I can't. And I get it, it is scary to like look at these past feelings, these past emotions, these past situations, this, what are like the things that you're still emotionally attached to that are triggering you or driving you or, you know, whatever, that are from a, a, a scarcity and lack based place that are keeping you stuck in, in old patterns, right? But like old habits, old, you know, old shit that is just no longer what you want in your life anymore. When you shed all of that, when you purge all of that, when you detox all of that, that is when your frequency rises. That is when you begin to feel lighter. That is when you can finally like transcend it and ascend to a more abundant, fulfilling, fulfilling, pleasurable, stable, consistent place instead of all this like up, down, sideways, are we good? Are we not good? Oh my gosh, I'm scared. Like one extreme or the next, right? This is like a, a lunar eclipse that is really showing us where we're super attached to these like extremes and polarity, right? Because the nodal axis is, is literally like a constant uh, pendulum. We learn the lessons of one and then we you know, move down to the other, right? You know, like last spring was abundant AF for me and then things took a turn and then things took a turn and the Scorpio South Node came and I was like, whoa, okay, you know, like, and I got in bits and pieces of it uh, before, you know, when I was still mainly in the Taurus North Node, I was working through a lot of deep shit, a lot of shit from my past, a lot of shit with home and family and stuff. But like then, it, it really came and just kind of took over and it felt like that's what I was in for a little while, right? And so I, I get both sides of it, right? But something is happening with this lunar eclipse that is like, hey, can you, can you go in the dark? Or if you're already in the dark, can you face the feelings that are keeping you there, that you're attached to, that you're holding on to, that you're clinging to dear life to, the fears, the things that you haven't wanted to face that are keeping you at this place, right? I just made a post the other day, like talking about how for months I was so confused from the whiplash of going from this like abundant, thriving, pleasurable, blissful, like Torian place, like just beautiful place to facing so many fears, like fear after fear was coming up and old versions of me, old past stuff, you know, scarcity, lack, like 
all of it just came back. And I was like, I don't understand. Like, why did this have to happen? Why was I even shown this like beautiful, you know, phase of my life in the first place? Like, and we get like that, we get stuck on like, why did this have to happen? Why did this happen? Why is this happening? You know, like all of this stuff. And we get stuck there. And what I like finally kind of like what finally started hitting me recently, like eventually I let it go because eventually it was like, it was just keeping me stuck. I was just reliving the past and constantly searching for some kind of answer or meaning or reason because it helps me to pull some kind of reason or meaning from it, right? Like it helps me to move on, but I couldn't find any any reason that really felt true, you know, like, and that really felt right. And so eventually I was just like, okay, I don't know, but I'm sick of being stuck. I can't keep waiting for some kind of answer. I have to move on, right? So I moved on and recently, you know, I started kind of getting downloads about it. And it was like, you know, maybe you have been through that difficult time, you know, and this is for you too, if you're in a difficult time right now, right? Like maybe that difficult time that you've been in or that you were in, right? That brought up so much fear for you, that brought up so many different fears for you, that was really hard, that was a struggle, whatever it was, like maybe you went through that so you could see the other side, so you could see your quote unquote worst fears or what you thought was the worst possible case scenario. So you could see that if something like that did happen, that you could make it through it, right? That you actually can make it through it. And that's the, that's the side that oftentimes we don't see. Like, yeah, it may have definitely broke us. It may have definitely been difficult, right? Again, doesn't make how we feel any less valid, but it also shows that we can handle it, right? And our fears grow and evolve with us. Like as, you know, like if you don't have a house, you know, your greatest fear may be like, you know, I don't know how I'm gonna eat tomorrow, right? But then um, you get a job, you get a house, and then your greatest fear may be like, oh, I don't wanna be without a house or a job again, right? Like, you know, like our fears grow and evolve with us. So even the fears that you're facing now or faced recently may not be what they once were, right? They may be like your your past self might be looking and be like, oh, well, at least you're not homeless, you know? <laughs> like, you know, like I just, it doesn't mean that they're not there and that you shouldn't face them, right? But like, how can you face these things? How can you work with these things, right? Can you do some journaling? Can you really ask yourself, like, why am I holding on to these things? What is my core issue here? Right? Why am I not seeing that like because I faced all this stuff, I can face anything? So this is about like really seeing old behaviors, old habits, old versions of us, old insecurities, old fears, old emotions that we've had because of situations we've been in where we've been in survival mode, right? Like that's a lot of what this is too. Like where have we been conditioned to survival mode for so long that like we don't know how to deal with these things, right? And we don't know how to let it go and like actually be in a place of like abundance and flow and beauty and like, you know, having enough, right? Like where, like what is it that is keeping us in there? You know, for me, I realized that a lot of it was like my own insecurities. And when I worked through my own insecurities, I realized I had a lot more than I really thought I did, you know? Like, because when you're in lack mode, you're looking at everything from that perspective. You're looking at everything you're lacking instead of everything that you have, right? Instead of everything that you have. And it's so hard to create or think of a solution or to get more when you're in lack because nothing you get, if you do get anything, is ever going to be enough. And it's always gonna be coming from this place of desperation, which, yeah, sometimes we need to kick our butt into gear but a lot of people freeze or they avoid, right? And, or they obsess and then, you know, not much changes. So it's like, we have to really get into a place internally of seeing where we are still in like old behaviors, old self-destructive behaviors, you know, like doing things out of lack, not just because we want to, doing things because we feel like, oh, I, I, you know, need something from this or I'm desperate for this, not just because we want to. And so we may find or see in our lives with this Taurus Scorpio axis of like, 
you know, where have we been doing things and making decisions based on lack and now we're living a life or there's some aspect of our life that we really don't actually like that we thought we needed, but really we don't. To be fulfilled, we do not need this anymore. And now we're seeing like what we actually want and desire for ourselves and what we actually deserve, right? Like what we're actually worthy of and capable of. And so another thing this could bring up is like, where are you attached to external things that are a way of feeding this pain and lack and insecurity within you? And this could be people, relationships, money, a job, you know, situations, like whatever it is right? <laughs> so that is what I am seeing for this Scorpio lunar eclipse. Let me know down below if any of this was what you needed to hear. If you stayed through the beginning, also comment down below. Badass, because you are a badass and I appreciate you. Now we are going to get into what this means for your rising sign. I did talk a lot about this Scorpio lunar eclipse though in my May horoscopes for your rising sign. So if you would like even more on this, definitely go go watch that okay so anyways let's go ahead and get into it alrighty scorpio starting with you darling since this eclipse is happening in your sign this is going to resonate most if you are a scorpio rising so do remember that and i'm trying not to edit this video that much so also remember that as well but this eclipse is happening in your sign so that means everything that i just talked about in the very beginning of this video if you missed it you need to go back. I mean, like, you need to go back, okay? Because all of that should really, really, really relate to you in some way. But for you, this is about you. This is about yourself. Seeing where you are the problem in your life. And I'm sorry. Sorry to break it to you. But this is a lunar eclipse that is revealing to you things about yourself, old versions of yourself, old behaviors, old parts of your identity, old parts of expressing yourself or going about certain things that are no longer aligned with you, right? Now, for some of you, it may not be that. For some of you, it may be a time of really getting back to yourself and remembering who you are instead of releasing an old version of who you are. So it could be either or. It just kind of depends on your situation. But this is revealing something to you, a way that you've been going about something that you've identified with that may no longer be the case. It may no longer be who you are. And you've been going about this way for so long. You've been doing this for so long, but it's just no longer you, right? Like it's like something that needs to be shed, purged, old fears, old ways of reacting or acting that are not really getting you what you want and that are also conflicting with other people and conflicting with the peace, the stability, the consistency, the beauty, the harmony, the pleasure, the fulfillment that you want in your relationships with other people. You know, it's like if you're a Scorpio rising, it's really easy to act in indirect ways and to hold it all in and to not let other people know or see how you're really feeling. But if you want that, that relationship with other people, whether it be your partner, whether it be friends, whether it be just people in general, if you like, if you want that beauty, that stability, that growth, that evolution with others, then how can you be more vulnerable? Because there really is truly power and vulnerability that we miss out on so much. I have a lot of Scorpio placements myself. I just went on a whole rant actually on Instagram in the middle of filming this about Scorpio placements because I've been seeing where my own Scorpio placements have been really running the show in my life, right? It's like we have to hide parts about ourselves. We have to hide our feelings, right? Because we're scared someone's going to take them and use them against us because we are very emotionally intense people. And we fear that if someone knew who we really were, if we were that vulnerable with someone to share these deep, dark, intense, chaotic, messy emotions, that they wouldn't accept us for who we are, right? And so we feel that if we shared them, that would give someone the power, and so we hide them, and we keep it moving. And so if you're a Scorpio rising, you may be dealing with some of that, right? So this is showing you old attachments, old habits, old ways of being, old instinctual ways of being that you just do and don't even think about because you've done it for so long. It's been part of your life since maybe childhood or 
you know, it, it got introduced to you from your parents or whatever. It's like, what is like, what can you let go of? What is it time to let go of? Right. And also, what are you attached to in terms of identity that is actually keeping you stuck and not allowing you to progress? You know, and also, can you remember your own true power? Right. Because really, your own true power is inside of you. It's it's when you can deal with the difficult emotions that happen no matter what. And you don't try to play the defense Right? You don't try to, to be your own protector from feeling certain things by being indirect or manipulating situations or whatever in relationships to get what you want, but really just embracing how you feel, even if it is deep, even if it is dark, even if it is intense, like the people that feel it will flock to you. And so this is about becoming free of that which you hold on to, that which you've become attached to with yourself. <clears throat> and some of you, even like I said, remembering who you really are at your core, remembering that depth of who you are and what really does give you power. Well, also, you know, facing certain insecurities, facing certain things that have made you feel unworthy or not good enough in your life. And so this can be a very empowering moment. Yes, it may bring up some fear. Yes, it may bring up some insecurities. Yes, it may bring up some old versions of you that need to be worked through. But all in all, it's to empower you, to show you who you are now, who you're becoming, and what you need to let go of, what's no longer you, what's of the past, right? So let me know down below if this landed with you, if you're a Scorpio rising, if you would like more. Definitely make sure to check out the beginning if you haven't, but also check out your May horoscope, your horoscope for May, the video right before this video. You'll get a lot more detail on this and what's coming for the month ahead. I love you. Comment badass down below if you watch your whole horoscope, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. Alrighty, Sagittarius, this lunar eclipse for you is about letting go. It is happening in your 12th house, so this is the time to be really facing those deep dark things that you've been putting off that have been subconscious that have been kind of in the background or lying underneath the surface in some way it's about really seeing and facing those those habits those patterns that you know are self-destructive that you know are not really creating the life that you desire in your physical 3d world in the, in the lifestyle and the life that you want to be living and the job that you want to have and the kind of health that you want to have, right? Like, what is it that, like, something's being revealed at this time to show you something that's missing? It could be the sense of rest, the sense of healing, the sense of work that needs to be done on yourself to really get back into a state of feeling fulfillment in your day-to-day -day life. And so you may need to take a break or pull back or go within to really find the answers here and to really see what needs to be transformed, see what needs to be transmuted, face old versions of yourself, old insecurities that are really holding you back in your life. You know, so this could be a time where you may need to take some time for yourself. You may need to pull back, be in seclusion, seclude yourself for a little bit, get some rest, you know, uh, go within, face some of these old fears, whether they're subconscious or whether you're aware of them, whatever this this lunar eclipse is revealing them. It's really showing you the habits that are dictating your life that you're still attached to. The patterns that are dictating your life that you're still attached to. And so this is a time of letting them go, letting things go, right? Like really letting things go. You don't have to carry these burdens, this baggage, this you know, dark looming feeling of heaviness over you anymore. If you missed the beginning of the video, go watch that because it will likely resonate for you if you're sad rising. I went into a lot. And so, um, yeah, but that is what I'm seeing for you, Sag. You know, this could also be facing some financial fears or insecurities to do with your finances, to do with shared finances and resources that you have with other people, building wealth, um, you know, things like that. So that could come into play with you as well. But that is what I'm seeing, Sag. Uh, let me know down below if this resonated. Go watch the beginning of the video if you didn't. And I will see you in the next one. Bye. Alrighty, Capricorn, this lunar eclipse for you is happening in a place that is very much about other people, networking, your place in the world, the people that you surround yourself with, the audience that you may have, the groups of 
people that you belong to, etc. So with the lunar eclipse happening here, it's showing me that you may see some things revealed to you about your place in the world, the people that you're attracting or that you're networking with, the groups of people that you have, maybe promoting, marketing, etc. things like that, audiences, if you are, you know, if you have an audience, whatever, it's like kind of showing you things about other people and the people that in some way deal with you, like in some way interact with you in some way, right? Like, and so this could be a time where you're like, you know what, like I need to let go of these toxic ass connections or these really complicated, complex, like connections that I have with other people, like they're really not for me anymore. They're really not aligned with my peace, my joy, my harmony, my pleasure, my creativity, with what I view as stable and secure with myself. This could also deal with work in some way, like the types of people that you're connecting with through work or through a job that you're doing or through health in some way. It's like you're kind of getting out of a group mindset and going more internal into your own passions, hobbies, creativity, etc. And so there could be some attachments that you have to chaos in the world or chaos with other people or complexity or complications with other people that you are kind of being re like you're kind of being shown for this lunar eclipse it's kind of being revealed to you and it's like okay like if i want to have more stability more security more consistency in my life like i may need to shed some of these old connections or this old network or this old group of friends or these old acquaintances that are just no longer aligned with me like or i may need to like if you have a brand that's very public or a business that's very public or if you're like a creator or something that's very public it's like do I want to keep kind of marketing to the same people you know or on the same platform or whatever like something like that so that is what I'm really seeing with you for this Capricorn rising again if you would like more go check out my May 2023 horoscopes for more in-depth <laughs> shit for this uh, month ahead and watch the beginning if you haven't because that was really in depth too and it should relate to you still even no matter what rising sign you are but I will see you guys in the next one Bye. Aquarius rising this lunar eclipse for you is bringing in a lot of revelations about your path in life your career your long-term goals and any fears or insecurities or old attachments or lack that you have in terms of this area of your life do you have fears going after what you want? Have you been going after what you want, but maybe it's not really been what you want. Maybe it's been out of insecurity or lack or scarcity or fear, right? And so that's what this lunar eclipse is really, really bringing in for you as an Aquarius rising. And it's also showing you where you can actually find more freedom, abundance, stability, consistency yourself in your own personal life, in your own internal world or with home and family, etc. right? It's definitely going to be bringing up things to do with uh, your job, you know, or your your day to day routines in some way. It could definitely be bringing up things to do with like things that you really want to do and are motivated to do. But it's like this really is like a work inspired kind of eclipse for you that is really creating a lot of change in terms of what you want out of life, the direction that you're going in, the goals that you have, the legacy you want to leave behind, the power that you want to exert in the world and where you've been attached or fearful or insecure, you know, when it comes to things related to your long-term goals, your long-term achievements, who you want to be, your career, etc. So yeah, this is a time really bringing in those things for you. If you missed the beginning of this video, Go back and watch it because you're missing out on a lot and you will relate to it. And if you would want, like even more about all of this, go and watch our May 2023 horoscope. It's the video right before this one. It is way more in depth, way more detail about the month ahead. So definitely go watch that if you have not already. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. Alrighty, Pisces rising. This eclipse for you is happening in your ninth house. So this is revealing or showing something to you about potentially certain fears that you have that are like on a big scale, like worldly fears or fears to do with like purpose, life, philosophy, how the world is, right? It could also be showing you toxic attachments that you have to certain belief systems or educational pursuits that are way too complex or chaotic or toxic in some way. Okay, so that is what this lunar eclipse is really showing you. Now, this could somehow draw back into also things that you're passionate about, your children, 
you know, things that really give you a sense of joy and entertainment. It's like you once found maybe joy in, I don't know, watching the news or reading news articles or something. And now it's kind of become this like obsessive habit or this toxic addiction or something like that. Like I'm just giving random examples here, but it's like, what, what like external fears, what worldly fears, what like bigger macro fears, attachments, insecurities have you had about like where things go in the long term where you haven't really been focusing on the here and now, you know? And so it's like releasing some of those things and, you know, letting go of some of those things is going to help you get back into the here and now and see the abundance, the beauty, the simplicity, the pleasure, the fulfillment of the here and now and being where you are right now, you know? And so that is a lot what this lunar eclipse is about for you. If you would like more, make sure to watch the beginning, but you can also watch your horoscope for May 2023. If you haven't already, it's the video right before this one. I went way more in depth for the month ahead. So definitely go watch that if you haven't already. I love you. Bye. Alrighty, Aries, this lunar eclipse for you is happening in your eighth house. So this is revealing something or a peak moment or even a, a letting go moment of certain power dynamics, certain shared resource or finance situations, financial situations that are going on within your life. So where you have this kind of scarcity or needy or desperate attached energy or where someone else does to something you share with them. And it's kind of finally like realizing that and realizing like, I don't need this anymore to be okay, to feel worthy or to feel deserving or to feel stable or to feel sustainable. I don't need this anymore, whatever it is, you know, there's like fears around other people's money or finances or complexity or toxicity or chaos going on that this full moon is bringing up to reveal to you to say, hey, you can take care of yourself all on your own, you know, with your Taurus second house and all of the things that we have there like if you really want freedom it's like doing these things all on your own like finding your own assets your own stability your own sense of resources instead of relying on or feeling like you need or are desperate for or attached to other people's stuff right and so that is where this is really coming in and somehow this could also be bringing up family and your personal life and your private life and your past and parents and things like that with Mars being in your fourth house. And so, um, you know, it could be bringing up insecurities here where you feel like you do need some of these things, but it's like this full moon is coming in to say, hey, it's time to purge this. It's time to shed this. It's an old contract or an old loan or an old debt or something that you have with someone else or an institution or company or whatever it's like revealing this to you like you don't need to be scared of this anymore stop giving this power and let it go right and so if you didn't watch the beginning of this video i definitely suggest that you go do that and watch the may 2023 horoscopes the video right before this one if you haven't done that either for a way more in-depth analysis of the month ahead i love you and i will see you in the next one Alrighty, Taurus rising, you are a part of this eclipse. It's happening in your opposite sign of Scorpio, but there's a lot going on in your sign too. So this eclipse for you is all about your relationships. It is all about your relationships, other people in your life, the close connections and commitments that you have. And where some of those relationships or those relationship dynamics have become toxic, complex, destructive, where there are certain attachments, fears, or insecurities there. And this lunar eclipse could kind of bring that up for you to finally face some of these things and shed and let go and purge some of these things in your life, whether it be a, a relationship itself or whether it be an old way of relating to other people, an old dynamic, old insecurities, old fears, etc. This could also be happening in your partner too. If you are in a committed relationship, they could be going through a lot of like turbulent change or shifts within how they're feeling. They could be feeling this a lot as well. Um, but all of this is to kind of set you free and to give you more freedom and liberation and who you are in your own sense of worth and stability within yourself. Right. And so that is what it, that is what this is all about. You know, like it's shedding old attachments or old toxic ways or old obsessions old ways, uh, like old fears, you know, things like that, old versions of yourself even, you know, if, if this is opposite your ascendant, right? Like, so this is a time of like relating to people and dealing with relationships in a new way. And it's showing you how to be more steady, stable, 
etc for that and it's a very faded karmic change you know and so that is what i'm seeing for you taurus let me know down below if this relates if you would like more something in more detail go check out your horoscope for 2020 or may 2023 uh, i posted it right before this video so definitely go check out that and uh watch the beginning of this video too because you'd probably relate to it a lot uh, if you missed that so i will see you guys in the next one bye Alrighty, gemini here's your quick little horoscope for this scorpio lunar eclipse this is happening for you in your sixth house of work health uh, like you know the things that you do on a day-to-day -day basis and so this could be bringing up some fears lack insecurity old attachments old habits that are affecting your day-to-day -day life your routines your work life your health life all of that that are you know that you're doing but that are not really helping you in some way and so this lunar eclipse is revealing that to you it's revealing what's not working what's not healthy what's not you know what's toxic even this could be a great time to go on a detox to go on a cleanse a purge whatever you know to really face some fears or insecurities or old attachments to certain old habits that are affecting your health or your day-to-day -day work life or your day-to-day -day routines and really taking care of yourself, you know? And this is all to break you free from this, right? To break you free from these patterns, from these habits that are just really not for you anymore, that are creating more chaos and complexity and toxicity in your day-to-day -day life, right? Now, some of this could somehow tie back into your values, your priorities, your money, your finances, in some way with Mars in your second, you know, so do watch out for that. It could be bringing up some insecure insecurities with Mars in your second um, or some things that need to change about the way that you priorit prioritize things, about the way that you take action on things, about the way that you really go about things, right? Um, so that could be it as well. So let me know down below if that resonated though. And if you missed the beginning of this video, you do not want to miss it because you're going to resonate to it a lot. So go back and watch everything that was said. And if you want more about your own horoscope for the month ahead, go check out the May 2023 horoscope and I will see you guys in the next one. Alrighty, Cancer Risings, for you, this lunar eclipse is happening in your fifth house. So this is really bringing up old destructive patterns, behaviors, old attachments or fears in terms of what you find fun with, right? Like what you find joy in, you know, and how sometimes what you find joy in or what you think is fun or entertaining can be somewhat toxic, self-destructive, unhealthy, complicated, chaotic, etc. Right. And so this is really bringing up for you like your own sense of self and expression and how you find fun and and what you take part in and how that can actually be too extreme at times or too much or destructive at times, especially with Mars and your sign, which is the ruler of this lunar eclipse. So you're going to be feeling this eclipse a lot. <laughs> you know, the ruler of this eclipse is in your sign. So you're going to be feeling this eclipse a lot. You could feel this very intensely. This could be a very emotional time for you. The time where you are feeling either very on edge, very aggravated, very frustrated, or like there's just something that you need to release. There's a lot. If you are feeling like on edge or very frustrated, this is emotion built up that you need to release, especially to do with things that you may find fun in or you may have found fun in that are now toxic or self-destructive old dating habits also sexuality also things to do with children could come up with this lunar eclipse as well so watch out for that too it's also bringing up certain insecurities you have in terms of your public image and who you want to be and how deserving that you feel you are right like you don't have to keep partaking in this old way of being and this old way of self-destructing with fun or things that you think you find pleasure in. It's like a whole new way of finding pleasure and fun is being reborn in you. And, um, you know, being more consistent, stable, reliable, and finding more fulfillment in connections that are actually a lot more stable instead of so chaotic is another thing that could come up so that is what i'm seeing for you cancer rising let me know down below if this relates i would love to hear your feedback and if you didn't watch the first part of this video definitely go back and watch that because you will relate to it a ton so you're missing out on a ton if you haven't and then also if you haven't seen the may 2023 horoscope video for your horoscope for the month ahead go back and watch that it's the video before this one i love you
Bye. Leo Risings, my fellow Leo Risings. This lunar eclipse for us is a big deal. I even took notes on it for us from things that I've been noticing really come up, you know, not even just now, but from the last year and a half almost now, right? Like it's been a lot, you know, like we've had to go through a lot. There's been a lot of fears surrounding our home life, our family, our foundations. Are we safe? Where do we feel safe? Where do we feel a sense of safe, safety and security? There's been attachments to old things from the past that we've really had to face and let go of. And, you know, there's also a lot of fears around our career and living up to our potential. And so it really is a lot. It really is a time that is bringing has brought up a lot for us because this is you know our fourth and tenth house they are angular houses so these are big life changing houses so for the last like year and a half has been pretty life changing you know and so anyway but this lunar eclipse is bringing some more of that up like what's left right what fears related to home and family related to the past what old baggage what old things in our lives and our personal lives that you know, is left that we don't want to face, right? And how is that holding us back from reaching the potential that we want? Because when we embrace that, when we find the ability to be vulnerable with that, when we face those old insecurities, when we face those old wounds, when we face those old fears, when we face that old baggage, it sets us free and it liberates us and it actually expands us into our potential, into the the life path we want to go down into the career that we want into the success that we want into the achievements that we want and so remember that right now a lot of this could be also somehow showing us our own self-destructive patterns and things that we need to feel with mars in cancer in our 12th house this could be showing us old habits old patterns old behaviors that are no longer working for us and that were that kind of got there out of old insecurities or old situations, old traumas, you know? And so that could be something else that's really coming up for Leo Risings at this time. So let me know if you're Leo Rising down below if this relates and what you are noticing come up. I would really, really, really love to hear your feedback on this one. Make sure to go watch the first part of this video because it's all from my perspective as a Leo Rising. So you will likely relate a lot. So go back and watch the first part of this video if you did not already. And then also if you haven't seen your May 2023 horoscope, for this month, I uploaded it right before this video, so go watch it. You are gonna miss out on a lot if you don't. We have really amazing things coming this month, so you don't wanna miss it. And uh, yeah, I love you guys. Bye. Virgo rising. Okay, so this eclipse for you may not be the same as it is for some of the other signs. It may not be as crazy for you because it is in your third house, which is a little bit of a, it's like, it's called a cadent house. It's a house that you really don't, you know, like, so, okay. I will tell you well that where this will come up. It will come up in your day-to-day -day life, your day-to-day -day experiences. You know, you go to the grocery store and someone's, you know, freaking out or there's a crisis, right? Or there's a crisis in your neighborhood or something, right? Like something like that. It's like around you, but it may not be like necessarily to you. It's like to people around you, people, you know, or acquaintances, you know, or in your environment, but may not be directly happening to you in some way or to people really close to you. For some of you, it could be. Um, the third house can be like siblings, neighbors, cousins, and, and I even see sometimes like really close friends come up in that. But for the most part, I will say this is a little bit uh, probably easier for you, but it's still a time of like really seeing your fears and securities and attachments to your surroundings and to things going on around you and how they affect you emotionally right? How your day-to-day -day environment, your day-to-day -day experiences really affect you emotionally. And to set yourself free from that, it's like you need a very stable, solid belief system. You need a very stable, solid direction and path on where you're going, right? Because then the context becomes big, bigger than just where you are right now and what's going on right now, right? And so um, this is a time where it's like showing you where you're attached or where you have fears or where there's toxicity or complications in your external environment, your immediate environment, and where that creates issues for you and how you attach to that and let that trigger you um, and don't stay in line with your higher belief or your higher wisdom or the plan or the path or whatever that you have for your life, right? And so, um, yeah, that is basically what I'm seeing for you as a Virgo rising. Let me know down below if that relates. If you missed the beginning of this video, go back and watch it because you do not want to miss out on that. And if you would like more on what's coming for you, go see my May 2023 horoscope video. It's the video right before this one. 
definitely want to watch your horoscope for this month. It is a very, very, very big month, an abundant month coming in, so don't miss out. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. Alrighty, Libra Rising. This lunar eclipse for you is showing you where you are so attached to fears, scarcity, insecurity in your life, where that has become your priority, where you're attached to survival mode, where you're not letting yourself live or make investments or, you know, go after the kind of abundance, wealth, you know, money situations that you want because you have these innate kind of scarcity, you know, lack priorities within you that come from a fear-based based place. And so this lunar eclipse is really revealing that to you. Like where are your priorities all driven from lack, scarcity, etc.? And how is that maybe keeping you stuck in life? How is that actually toxic for you? How are you feeding your own toxicity? You know, like where do you need to let some of this go so you can make room for more in your life, for what you know deep down that you deserve? And where do you have old feelings of insecurity or of unworthiness, you know, that are keeping you where you don't want to be, right? And so this month is a beautiful month. If you haven't watched my May 2023 horoscopes, go do that because there's a lot of abundance and expansion coming in for you as a Libra rising. It's going to take you out of a lot of this scarcity and lack and you know, uh, survival kind of energies that you may have felt over the last year or so with Scorpio, with the Scorpio South moon moving through your second, um, it may feel like you can't rely on yourself sometimes, or you can't make your own things a priority. Like you don't want to rely on other people or you don't want to think about or deal with the harder financial issues. But it's like this lunar eclipse is like, Hey, you need to deal with this. You need to deal with these fears or else you're never going to get into your power. You're never going to find your power if you keep avoiding these difficult emotional situations to do with money or to do with resources or to do with priorities, right? It could be any of those things. It's like you have to face some of these things if you wanna rise into more abundance and more like beauty and pleasure into your life. And I know that you do, right? Like, and so, this is what this lunar eclipse is really bringing up to you. Where are you still holding fear, insecurity, scarcity close to your chest? And like having that dictate your priorities and what you think you deserve and what you think you're worth and what you think you can do for yourself instead of facing some of that old shit, letting it go and moving into like, you know what? This is not going to be the driving factor in how I support me or whoever anymore, right? And so that is what this time is really about. So if you did not watch the beginning of the Libra Rising, I really, really, really recommend you do as a Libra Rising. Watch the beginning because it's going to relate if you're already relating to this. Um, and also watch your May 2023 horoscopes if you haven't as well after this. So I love you. Comment down below if this resonated. You are a badass. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.